How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to Software Inc. Welcome to the first time lapse of the hard mode series. This is going to be the new Nerdsoft headquarters, and this is an idea for a building that I've had floating around for a little while. I talked about it a couple of videos ago. I had this idea in my head, and this is sort of that. I'm going to be honest, it doesn't turn out 100% the way I had hoped that it would. It does present some challenges a little bit later on, and we'll see that when we get into the real-time gameplay portion of the video. But all in all, I'm quite happy with how the building turned out either way. It was always going to be this tower, and you'll see it become a tower, but I wanted to make sure it had a pretty solid base. I wanted to still be able to print, you know, a couple of million copies of my products and other people's products at any one time. I wanted space for a giant marketing team, for my support team, my fixers teams. I wanted a canteen in here. I wanted to make sure I had space to expand as well. And by the time we're done with this, we absolutely will have space to expand and we absolutely will have space for all of my teams. And I'm also able to break down all of my teams into designers, programmers, and artists. So everything ends up working out despite there being a couple of flaws, and if you pay close attention to the time lapse, you will probably spot a thing or two that I happen to forget to build. I'm not going to point them out because I do talk about them in the real time gameplay portion of the video, but there are some things, some fairly important things, that I forgot to do. Now, you've just seen me lay out the base of the building. This part we're working on right here is going to be the tower, and I probably should have made this thing bigger, but I do still really like the design that I went for. I wanted to do this thing where I sort of chopped off the corners and then pushed them back a little bit and then continued those up with the rest of the tower. So those corner pieces that are sort of floating away from the main building are eventually going to be just pillars that go up to hold up a top floor. The little room off to the side there, the little wart on the side of the building, is going to be a leader's office. And then with everything split up the way it was into four, that's going to be a central corridor with room for the designers, the programmers, the artists, and also a meeting room so that every single team has its own meeting room. And there you go. You can see, as we've just done, that uh, those corner pieces continue all the way up. And I just really like how this turned out. I really like alternating the window types. I think that's something we did on some of the previous Nerdsoft towers in the previous series. We do the tall windows and the short windows. It just creates a really nice... Uh, facade for the building and then this top floor as well is going to be just expanded a little bit to have an overhang and honestly like I said I probably should have made the tower a little bit bigger but I do like how this thing turned out I think it's kind of cool that we have that sort of reddish pinkish peachy kind of looking color thing going on as well and of course I had to turn the roof of the building into an actual roof to hide some of the color stuff I was doing down at the front curved section of the building and also to bring some of that red color through into some trim on the uh, the roof as well. Now we're getting into the decorating phase. I wanted to try and maybe bring the Nerdsoft logo into some of these hallways. I couldn't really end up doing that. So I decided to just put this table in the middle with some carpet underneath it just so we had something in these hallways so it wasn't just this empty space. There's nothing that's actually going to go on that table. And to be quite honest, we are just going to copy and paste this entire design the entire way up the tower, which I'm well aware is not exactly inspired nor creative, but the whole idea here is that every team is going to have the three development rooms plus a meeting room, so it kind of makes sense that every floor of the tower is more or less going to be identical. Now that is sort of going to be famous last words, because... As I mentioned, when we get into the gameplay section, there's some things that we might have to change and there's some mistakes that I've made that you might notice. But again, you're going to have to pay attention or just watch the video and you'll find out the things that I forgot. But regardless, the whole point is that this thing's expandable and we can adapt and overcome the challenges. And let's be honest, if things work out, if we end up with a tremendous amount of money, we can just go and build another building elsewhere. I mean, we haven't got into hardware yet. We're in, I think, about 2001, 2002 at the moment in the game. We haven't touched hardware, so that's something we need to go into. That's something where we could potentially make a bunch of money. We're going to need a factory for that because there is not going to be the space in this building to do hardware. 
So that's something I'm looking forward to. I really enjoyed building the European factory looking thing in the last series. I'm, I'm not really sure what the factory could look like in this series, but I definitely want to get away from that European style and go for something. Maybe, maybe we try and go ultra modern. Maybe we try and go sci-fi. Maybe we go either of those two, to be quite honest. Anything else would be kind of just a big gray box as far as factories go. So ultra modern sci-fi, I don't know. Leave your suggestions in the comments below if you have an idea for what the, I guess the hardware factory should end up looking like. It is going to need to be quite huge. So we'll see how that goes. Now back to talking about what we're doing at the moment. Every single one of the development offices is going to have 14 computers, 14 desks. So we can have 14 designers, 14 programmers, and 14 artists per team. Now, of course, some of the teams aren't going to need artists, such as networking and I believe systems. Uh, they, they don't need artists, so their, I guess their, their artist's room can be turned into something else, or we could just, you know, divide that 14 in half and apply seven more designers and seven more programmers, giving us 21 of each per team. Either way, We'll see how that goes. We'll see what we end up doing. I'm not going to spoil the gameplay section, as I've mentioned a couple of times. But this is, as I said, going to be the design going the entire way up the tower. We are essentially going to be copying this the entire way up, the entire way through it. Now, I will say, you aren't going to see every little detail of what this place is going to look like in the time lapse. I end up, and I will repeat this in the gameplay section, I end up recording a lot of this, or building a lot of this, I should say, over the course of a day. This wasn't just one sitting. I kind of left my PC to go and get some food and do some chores and run some errands and whatnot, and then came back to build a little bit more, and that was the majority of my day. But we will do a deep dive on everything that has been built for the new Nerdresoft headquarters once we get into the gameplay section. And by once we get into it, I mean right now as we jump into the gameplay section. And now, with all that said and done, welcome back to Nerdresoft, welcome back to Software Inc. Hard Mode, and welcome to our new headquarters, which doesn't have a roof. It doesn't have a roof because I built up to the height limit and I can't go any higher, so it's not going to display a roof on this building in any of these cinematic shots that I do. That's going to annoy me for a very long time, but... It is what it is. Now, I will say that I haven't recorded the commentary for the time lapse just yet, so I might repeat myself on a couple of points by the time I get around to doing that, but there's gonna be a lot here that you didn't see get built in the time lapse because I built this headquarters over the course of a few hours throughout the day, kind of left it, came back to it, changed things, redesigned things, and so this is now the final product. And by that, I mean, there is still some empty space up here. There's a lot of room for expansion with a lot of empty rooms. But again, there's just going to be parts that you didn't see in the time lapse. So we will start from the bottom and work up. So on the ground floor, of course, we have a lobby. It's nothing too crazy. It is just a combination of grays and this sort of peachy, orangey, reddish color that we have going on here. Depending on the display that you're watching this on will depend on what color this actually shows up as because I'm looking at it on one monitor right now and it looks like a peach color. And on another monitor, it looks like a pink kind of reddish color. So it's gonna, your mileage may vary, but this color is running throughout this entire building. Uh, now, moving out of that space, we go into some pretty boring looking hallways. There's a lot of server rooms down here. And the server rooms, this one here is source control. This one here, I believe, is our store server. And this one here is our hosting server because we are going to keep up a lot of the hosting tasks that we've been doing thus far. And then over here, we have some bathrooms and we have some space for distribution, essentially. We have a bunch of space for couriers to come in and to pick up different boxes and whatnot. And then over here, we have some parking that is exclusively for couriers, as well as some uh, bicycle parking as well, which I don't know if anyone's going to use, but we have that available. Everything else down here, for the most part, is empty at the moment. 
Moving upstairs, we actually have our product printers. We currently have a whole bunch of large product printers, exactly 28 of them right there. So that's going to give us a whole bunch of boxes that can be moved out and can be shipped out to stores and eventually given to customers. And I think this just looks kind of cool. We have a whole bunch of storage up here and some storage downstairs as well. And of course, the six different bays for the couriers to get their things. Moving back upstairs again, going to be a lot of empty space up here. Do we have a meeting room downstairs? We don't have a meeting room downstairs. OK, uh, so we have our first meeting room up here as well as space for my support team. Again, a whole bunch of empty space. A lot of this could be used for different teams. We could get additional support teams in here if we wanted to. And they have a meeting room here, which is hopefully going to be enough for all of them. They also have some bathrooms in the middle because I forgot to be good and I forgot to place bathrooms. I, I The bathrooms were very much a last minute thing. Moving upstairs again, we get into a bit of a different layout. Similar idea, but this is where we start connecting to the staff parking. And this is where we have the marketing team at the moment. They are right at the back of the building here. And uh, they are going to be joined by the, I believe, the fixers work out of this little office. And then next to them, we have a canteen with a kitchen across the way and a whole bunch of bathrooms and a meeting room. Again, everything else in this floor is currently going to be empty because it's expandable. We can bring more teams in, another marketing team, perhaps another fixer team, another support team or whatever else we want to bring in, really. And then moving up again, we start getting into the tower which in this case, for this floor, this is set up for my 2D team. We have space for artists, programmers, and designers. They have a dedicated meeting room and a space for a team leader. I've also gone and put fire alarms in all of these rooms, as well as some sprinklers, which I'm hoping will be enough to stop me getting heavily fined at the end of each year, but I'm probably going to have to work on that a little bit. I don't know what rooms do need fire alarms and what ones need sprinklers, so we'll figure out when we get fined. And hopefully it's not going to be too much. Now, moving up through the tower, every floor is identical. And I know this isn't very creative. I know it's a little bit boring, but it's just it just makes sense. Every office space has 14 desks, so we can have 14 artists, 14 programmers and 14 designers. And because we're going to be in a situation where this is a 2D team, a 3D team, an audio team, a networking team, we should never really need more than 14 of each specialization per team anyway. So this should be OK. And then moving to the top, this is where utilities go. So we have uh, heating up here. We have air conditioning up here. And that should be fine. We do have space to put additional teams and another leader up here if we want to do that. But I'm going to be honest, I don't really want to do that. At least I don't want to do that yet. What I'd like to do is go in here and sort out HR management for all of my teams because we can now go up to 14 programmers, 14 designers and 14 artists for the 2D team. We can do the same thing for the 3D team. We can also increase those salaries quite a bit. So we should now have essentially wait, what are we looking for here? System 2D and wait a minute. Why is the 3D? Oh. That is not what I'm looking for at all. We just want uh, we just want 3D on the 3D team. So let's start looking for 3D specifically on the two. Wait a minute. Yeah, no, that is. That, sorry, I'm getting really confused here. That is, I guess, what we're going to do. Well, I guess morph is 3D and system. So maybe maybe the 3D team should have a little bit of systems in there as well. We'll give that a shot and see how it goes. As for the audio team, we are doing Soundscape, which is currently in beta. So if I look at the project details, it is audio, 2D and system. So let's give the audio team the same idea. We don't necessarily want to do 2D on that. We'll do audio and systems. We should probably just get a systems team. Now that I think about it, that would probably make more sense rather than splitting up a little bit. So let's let's actually commit to the idea that we're not going to do systems for all these different teams. We're going to have a dedicated systems team. So every team has its specialization and that's just the way it's going to be. So 14, 14 and 14 there. And then for marketing, that's fine. 42. We have 42 desks for the network team. Similar story, 14 and 14. In fact, ooh, networking doesn't have artists. Networking is just networking. 
So the networking floor might have to be changed up a little bit and then the rest of them are okay. So if I run the game now, it is now October 2001. It is day one. And I'm pretty sure the only reason the game is slowed down here is because I'm probably going to have some employees coming in. Not necessarily coders or developers, but I'm pretty sure we're going to have maybe a cleaner coming in or a courier or something like that. I did see someone. What are you, uh, what are you doing? Who are you is my question. You are a receptionist. Okay, so the receptionist has arrived here and is going the entire way through the building to get to the reception, which honestly... I have to be honest, looks pretty good with some lights in it. And we have that uh, that sort of proto Nerdrosoft logo at the back there. I think that looks great. Although this is what I'm really excited for. Look at those cyclists coming in here. Look at all these employees coming in here. This is great. We have a bunch of cyclists. We have a lot of them walking around as well. Is that me? Was I cycling to work? I was. I was cycling to work. Now we have an employee not having their social needs met what do you what do you need what is what's what's going on with you you feel isolated an open working environment canteens team meetings and furniture for socializing like a water cooler can help lonely employees you know i realize we don't have a lounge and we should probably get one now what i'm thinking i might do is actually get a couple of lounges we could do one say here and we could probably do one well what about here what about these spaces for two different lounges I could make them identical, which is good for me. So I'm actually thinking that's exactly what I'm going to do. Let's go ahead and get some couches and make a, uh, a lounge here. And there we go. We now have two very simple break rooms. Nothing too crazy. Just some vending machines, some water coolers, some espresso machines. Hopefully that's something my employees can actually go and use and not be miserable about. What are you doing? Why is there a courier here with a box just waiting in the lobby? That's a bit weird, I'm gonna be honest. That is a little bit weird. Kind of a kind of a weird thing for them to be uh to be doing. We've also got some employees waiting for the elevator, which has me slightly concerned. Now, who are you? That's the 2D team. Is this the 2D team floor? It is. So the 2D team's having a meeting. None of the other teams are having meetings right now, which is okay. Not really too worried about that. But people are moving around. People are you know, going going around doing their thing. We got some food going into the canteen that'll hopefully keep them happy. We have you currently unhappy with your job. I'm not sure why. You really have to pee and there's nothing to do. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> yeah, this, uh, this elevator situation might, might be about to become a problem. So where are you going? Why are you going downstairs? What are you... Oh my god. You are going such a distance to go to the bathroom. Oh... I can't believe I forgot to put toilets in the tower again. I'm slightly annoyed with myself that I've done this. Although I guess what I could maybe do is put some toilets in these spaces where we don't need artists. So for like a networking team, I could put toilets there and have them accessible to anyone. But then again, the elevators are still gonna be, still gonna be slowing people down. I could, I could put bigger elevators in here to be fair. By the looks of it. Well, actually, uh, not well, kind of. I could I could potentially put some larger elevators in here. It might work, it might not. But I, I might have to look into doing that. Because I feel like uh yeah, I feel like that's gonna be a pretty big pretty big deal. An employee is hungry and can't find food. Oh boy. We have a kitchen. We we have a kitchen, we have uh we have break rooms. So hopefully, oh, oh, there's Software Ink Cat as well. Hello. All right. So I guess I should probably show you what we've got in terms of staff at the moment. We have a bunch of cleaners coming in at eight and then again at one. We currently only have four cooks. We have two coming in in the morning, two coming in the evening. I think what I'm going to do is set all of them to come in in the morning and then have another uh, four come in. I say in the evening. I mean in the afternoon they're leaving at uh, five o'clock. So hopefully that means this food situation will sort itself out and we'll have more in the canteen for my employees to eat and hopefully stop starving and in terms of employees not having social needs met i mean we do we do have these lounges they might just end up being a little bit too far away from uh, the rest of my employees that might just be the case uh but i don't know 
Regardless, it is November 2001. Soundscape has a press release ready to go. It releases in February 2002. Vapor 3. I really wish this thing would hurry up. I'm going to be quite honest with you. Let's give this... Uh, so, systems and 2D and uh, networking. I'm going to take the 3D team off of this and the audio team off of this. And uh, systems... I mean, it's it's really just the 2D team needs to kind of be working on that, and the networking team as well. So network can stay on it, and that should be fine. Morph is exclusively 3D. Bucket 2000 is currently the 2D team. It's not really a priority. And uh, Roaster Coaster 3D Online currently being ported to GFriend. So hopefully that's going to work out for us as well. But I guess now we're just gearing up to release Soundscape, and we're going to hope it's good. We also have cooks that can't find fridges. Interesting. We might need another fridge. I might be slightly regretting... Well, actually, if I just did this, and I just went and grabbed you two, and put the two fridges right there, that should sort the issue of cooks not being able to find fridges. They should now be able to find them no problem, and therefore we should have a whole bunch of food going into this canteen. Now, I will say, I'm actually quite curious to see just how many floors we have unoccupied right now. So this is networking. This one is, so that's one, two, three. We have three floors that are unoccupied. So we could get a systems team in there if we really wanted to, which might not be a terrible idea. My worry is that almost everything needs systems. So we're potentially, oh boy, fire. <laughs> the fire inspector's on the way. Okay, this ought to be interesting. Uh, everything needs systems, so we might end up needing a ridiculous amount of, I guess, systems developers. Also, just real quick note, it seems like uh, Vapor has just taken a jump forward in terms of its progression, which was fantastic. There was definitely, yeah, there's definitely a notab notable increase in how quickly that's moving along. Uh, Morph 3, I don't really know. I've not paid too much attention to it. Uh, Bucket 2000 is probably going to take a while as well. Bucket 4... It's actually finished with its update, which is kind of fantastic. 11,000 active users on that. Roaster Coaster 3D Online, 6,900 active users. Oh, it needs an update. Oh, it needs an update. That audio level is kind of awful. Good lord. I don't really want to do anything to it, though. Because I feel like if I do anything too crazy to it, we're still going to be working on releasing that update when... We wait a minute. Why did Roaster Coaster do a million there? Not bad. Uh, we're still going to be working on that update when we go ahead and put Soundscape out. So we probably want to be careful there and probably don't want to overdo it. We do have some deals though. We have some print jobs: two hundred and fourteen thousand, five hundred forty-nine thousand uh, by September and October. I'm curious to see what's my manufacturing at the moment. Printing capacity: one point three million copies per month, six hundred seventy-two boxes. So it's actually down quite considerably at that. And I'm curious to see why. So large product printers, 2,000 copies per month, 48,000 copies, or 2,000, wait, 2,000 copies per box, 48, uh, 48,000 copies per month. This guy's 1,000, 24. So basically, I need more of these to get my capacity up to what it was. Which I'm not really a against doing i've got to be honest it's it's slightly tempting to go in and grab say that many of these guys grab these conveyor belts right here and essentially just uh duplicate them swing it around a little bit like uh, like this and if i put them right there i mean that light is blocked but that's okay we can go ahead and get rid of the lights and then essentially just do the same thing on this side so grab all of this duplicate it uh, we can swing it around a little bit, put it there. And then what I could do with that, actually, is get rid of this one, get rid of this one, and then turn this guy that way, turn this guy that way. And we could, if we wanted to, go ahead and elevate here, elevate here. We can lower it right about there and there. And essentially, that's going to give me a whole bunch more printing which should now bring me up to what exactly? What are we looking at? 2.2 million copies per month, 1,000 uh, boxes, 486 boxes per month is my capacity. So that's that's not bad. Let's go ahead and take those those uh, those deals right there. And uh, we'll start printing things and seeing how that goes. Because I'm curious to see 
what this place actually looks like when we have boxes going out and into storage. So we have these guys going around. We have these guys coming downstairs. We have couriers coming over to pick them up. The couriers are sitting down in this parking lot, which is good. So it's working, essentially, is, is what I'm getting at. Of course it's working. Of course it's going to work. But that's that's actually kind of cool. I I really like that. I really like how it filters around. That's uh, that's kind of great. Now, what I've realized I can go ahead and do here is just copy a few more of those printers, put them along here. We still have a way underneath right here. And uh, essentially, I've just added a whole bunch more production, which is kind of great. Now, I am going to take this guy out because I want to move this uh, this guy along just a little bit to here so that uh, we have more conveyor belts at ground level. Just because I think it looks... Oh, wait, no, I can't do that. I need those to be elevated so we have access to those printers. Eh. Turns out there was a reason for things to be that way. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and copy these ones as well. Let's duplicate them. Let's swing it around a little bit. And we want it to be right about there with a couple of ground level conveyors right there. And that's pretty great. That's going to be a lot of power consumption, but... To be quite honest, I'm I'm okay with that because I think in in theory this could make me a bunch of money and that's that's kind of what I'm interested in. So let's go ahead and take a look at my printing capacity. 3 million copies per month. Still I don't think as high as what we had before, but honestly not bad. Ooh. Oh, there it is. <laughs> there it is. Elevators can't be used during a fire. I need stairs. Okay, that's problem number one. That's going to be quite difficult to fix, actually. Uh, that's going to be really difficult to fix. Oh, yeah. Okay, I don't, I don't like that. Uh, 31 fire alarm violations. I need to have a fire alarm in each room above 10 square meters with flammable objects. Okay, sprinkler violations. Sprinklers need to be in offices. Okay. Let's view the rooms that have the problems. Pretty much all of them. All right, I've gone through and I've placed sprinklers and fire alarms and all that stuff. We'll see what happens when the next fire inspection comes around. The good news, though, is Vapor 3 is ready to be promoted into beta. So we'll go ahead and fix a bunch of bugs on that and see what ends up happening. Uh, Soundscape is due to go out next month, which is hopefully going to make us some money. And uh, Morph 3 is actually coming along quite quickly, which is good news. So... I think what we could probably go ahead and do now is have Bucket 2000 take priority in terms of development, which is 2D systems, and that's fine. I think we are going to need to get ourselves a systems team, but honestly, not really too worried about doing that just yet. My priority, to be quite honest, is uh, going ahead and getting Soundscape out there. It is now February 2002, after all, so let's go to... I guess, release and see if it's any good. Let's see what the stars are going to look like. Let's see if they align. Two, two, and two. What? No one can afford it. We didn't market it, and no one knows who we are. Oh, boy. All right, immediately, $100,000 to the marketing team, please, if you wouldn't mind. Uh, move that up to the top there. That's the morph and bucket marketing. That's fine. Oh, boy. Uh, support for Soundscape top priority let's see if we can update this thing as well i'm not really too concerned with using all the different tools it would be nice if we could uh use something that wasn't someone else's 2d editor but that's fine teams for this thing i'm gonna throw everyone at this uh at this update to get it done as quickly as we possibly can let's make that a top priority and see if we can't get the soundscape update out in a reasonable amount of time it's not looking like we're gonna so let's bring the priority down on bucket 2000 there. And yeah, that update's looking like it's going to take a while. So that kind of sucks. Uh, is it good? Sort by releases. It is outstanding. It just has no marketing. Does it have any units in stock? It has 124,000 in stock. So we are printing it, which is fine. It needs to make 1.8 million to be profitable, which is fine. So I guess it's just a matter of hoping for the best on this one. Let's make the marketing for it kind of a top priority and let's bring uh, Roaster Coaster's marketing down to maybe a five. Let's put it at, at a two actually and bring this down to uh, actually Roaster Coaster one, you two, and then everything else is whatever. Let's uh, release that uh, press release and just see what we can do with this. I'm hoping it makes money. 
It's it's not it's outstanding, but it's probably not very popular. So we'll just see what happens. Minus thirteen thousand dollars. Hopefully that turns into something once midnight ticks over. Thirty-eight thousand dollars. It could be worse. It could have been zero. So the good news is Soundscape has come up to have widespread marketing and is making a little bit more money than it used to be. It's just not making any kind of profit. The update's still not done for it either, and the porting is taking its time. Uh, it's just we're, we're in a rough spot with old Soundscape is uh, is where we are right now. It's uh, it's not making anywhere close to the amount of money that I would want it to make. But the good news is I've hired a bunch more couriers and oh my God, there's so many bikes uh, because I took some deals to print a bunch of stuff. So hopefully that works out. Uh, this update for Soundscape is so close to being done. That's kind of painful that it's not done already. It has like 1% to go. Someone couldn't have stayed overtime to just like finish that last little line of code. No, that's fair enough. Uh, 130,000 though. So it's, it's trying to make money. It, it is trying. It's failing, but it's trying. And I think that's what's important. Uh, we'll also, you know, put out an update for it and see how that ends up going for us. Hopefully well. Uh, we can probably queue up an update for some bugs as well. We'll just give that one to the fixers and let them sort of chill. Put it on the source for the uh, servers there. And that should be all right. And I think Morph 3 is probably going to have to go into beta really soon because it does release in December. Uh, we're also going to want to put out a press build of it to keep people kind of excited about it. And uh, marketing can go ahead and start putting together a press release for it as well. So let's see what happens now that uh, Soundscape has been updated and is in the process of being ported to some other operating systems. I'm kind of, I was kind of hoping we'd get it over to one other operating system today, but apparently not. I'm just curious really to see if you know, an update will take it up a little bit in terms of profit. And it did, actually. That's actually a good thing. The update kind of helped, and that's without it going to some new operating systems. So now that it's been ported, we should have a few more consumers waiting to uh, to pick that up. Oh, look at this. It's up to over half a million dollars now. Fantastic. Morph 3 is ready for a press release to go out. And Morph 3 is actually very close to having its code done. So I think I am going to let that get finished to 100% before I push it into beta. That'll give us a couple of months of beta, which is honestly okay by me. And then looking at Bucket, it seems that 2D and systems and just everything is slowing it down. So I think I am going to go ahead and get us a systems team. So let's just copy, let's pause, and we'll copy the network team for this one. And it'll be a systems team, I guess, one. We'll just go for that, plain and simple. And Systems Team 1, color-wise, can be sort of a, a reddish color. So that works out. In terms of HR, we're going to want to set it up similarly, but instead of network, we want to specialize in systems. And I don't think there's such a thing as uh, systems art. So we're probably okay there, not going too crazy with it. Everything else seems fine. Traits-wise, that's okay. High salary, role selection, don't change. We just need a team leader for it. And of course, we need to assign them somewhere in the tower. So we'll give them this floor right here. I I suppose if I really wanted to. Wait, who are you? What are you doing? Why, why do we have someone from the 2D team just sat up here? That is a bit weird. I'm going to be honest. That is a little bit, a little bit weird, but okay. Um, What I'm thinking I'm going to do potentially is... I guess I could add, you know, instead of 14, we add uh, seven to each number. So we could go for 21 uh, system designers and uh, programmers. Might not be a bad idea. Might be overkill, though. I think it might be a bit much. And uh, I suppose if I did do that, then wait, network anyone. Did I not set these rooms to be programmers, designers, etc., etc.? I didn't. That is actually a problem because the rooms all have the specific little accessory there. So this room actually needs to be uh, for artists. In fact, let's just go up the line here and limit room usage to artists. These ones in the corners here, we're going to limit room usage to programmers. And these ones here are going to be limited to designers. If I can go ahead and select them, which uh, it looks like I can. Okay. 
So limit usage to designers. And that should move people around a little bit and they should now use the accessory that they're supposed to be using. But in terms of the network team, the important thing is that there is no network art. So I'm really tempted to make this a bathroom because I feel like that would maybe be a good idea. It might help us out a little bit with people needing the bathroom in the tower. So let's give this a shot and see what can happen with it, right? We have, we have some decent space, so might as well see what we can do with it. Uh, in terms of doing bathrooms, I mean, we have a good amount of space. We do. It might be tricky with some of the windows needing swapped out, but I'm pretty sure I can do that. So that right there, bathroom, right? Room is assigned to a team which has not allowed any rooms leading up to it. What do you mean? Network team. Network team. Okay, that's that's weird that it's apparently... Okay, let me, let me unassign this. Room usage is anyone, and team is anyone. So that's no longer a problem. As for the rest of this, that's a bathroom. That's a bathroom. This is a bathroom. And this bit at the end is going to be an awkwardly sized bathroom if I do it that way, which I don't really want to do. So we'll leave that bit as it is. Uh, as for here, let's do this as a bathroom and then just do a bunch of, uh, of squares like this. And that does give us kind of a weird space at the end, and I'm not really sure what to do with that. So maybe we do just make some weirdly sized bathrooms, I guess. We could do something like... Uh, Something like that, I suppose. And then this could also be a bathroom. That actually kind of works out. Just a bunch of bathrooms, really. And it is in the tower, which should keep people relatively happy. So let's get some doors on here and see how it goes. <laughs> I'm not expecting a miracle. That's all I'm going to say. I will say, I suppose the good news is that I went with a floor that has the square windows rather than the tall windows. So you're not necessarily... I mean, you can notice that the windows are different but it does blend in with the general design of the building, so it's not that bad that the uh, the windows are a little bit different there. And uh, I suppose I should probably also go ahead and just restyle this slightly. So the interiors on these guys can be sort of a, a blue. The floors can be kind of a light. Actually, you know what? We're going to go a little darker on that. I'm going to go for a slight uh, blue on the floors as well. Because I think swapping the floors out for tiles, maybe, might look kind of interesting. What about smaller tiles? What about those tiles? I'm gonna go with the smaller tiles, or uh, yeah, we'll go with the small, small, no, bigger tiles. Go for the bigger tiles. Gives us a nice shiny floor. And then for lighting, we could, if we were so bold, go for this guy, which if I switch it to nighttime, is yellow. It's uh, it's not a great, it's not a great light, to be quite honest, but I think it works. And it's going to be just wherever I feel like putting it. There's absolutely no sense of symmetry with any of these bathrooms. But honestly, that's kind of okay. And there we go. We have some bathrooms. Hopefully that's going to work nicely for us. Hopefully that means that some of my employees will be able to get to the toilet a little bit quicker. Now, moving upstairs, this space is going to be for... I was going to make this for a systems team, but to be quite honest, I'm tempted to make this floor for systems because I can turn this space into another set of bathrooms. So that is actually exactly what I'm going to do. Uh, these spaces are also apparently set for anyone right now. Uh, so this right here is going to be limited to designers. This right here is going to be limited to, I suppose, the programmers. And both rooms are going to be set to my systems team. So if I turn on room labels, we can see systems team one, programmers and designers. We can see the same idea with the rest of these as well. This one here actually is supposed to be leaders. So let's just go up the tower and make sure that all of these spaces are in fact set for uh, for team leaders because they're currently not by the looks of it. Uh, the top one doesn't matter, but these guys 100% uh, team is irrelevant, but the usage is leaders. And then going down the list, we have the rooms all set up. Okay, so that's good. That's all working the way I would want it to. This is all apparently the 2D team as well, which is interesting. Um, not really super worried about that, I suppose. But yeah, this is all working the way I want it to. Uh, this and all of these guys are supposed to be meeting rooms as well. So let me just go up the tower, I guess, and limit usage to meeting. And that should work out nicely as well. Okay, so systems team meeting room right about here. Let's go ahead and select it. 
switch team systems. And now for the systems team, we just need to assign its leader's office and find a leader. So, leader, primary is programming, salary high, support does not matter, specialization, HR and automation, traits are whatever. Let's begin looking and see what we got. So, Brooke Edwards, 50 years old, has the things I'd be looking for, has some systems skill as well. So actually... Brooke Edwards, congratulations, you are going to the systems team. So congratulations, there you go, that's your job. Now we manage the team, manage the roles, you are now team leader. So systems should begin to hire some employees. And as it comes in tomorrow, is hopefully going to have 16 employees and very good compatibility as well. So we should see that systems team coming in here. And we should see them any second now coming up the tower. There we go, I think. Who are you? That is Brooke Edwards. Okay, so team leader's there. We have the systems team in here. Let's turn the labels off and start applying them to different tasks. So let's get systems on bucket two and just get them working. And immediately that is, I think, moving a little bit quicker, which is good news. Morph three is... I'm actually going to give systems morph three as well, just so they can, you know, assist with it a little bit you know, as it goes into beta. Has a couple of months of beta, which is great news. And then for Soundscape, honestly, not super worried about it. Let's just prioritize it for the fixers and let them do their thing. So Vapor 3 is actually ready to go whenever. It has 309 bugs that have been fixed. It's been in beta for a little bit. Let's just go ahead and put that thing out there and have a look at digital distribution. We currently have 18.5% of the market share and interestingly, there are only four, uh, there's only four of these things in the market right now. Vapor 3, features-wise, isn't as good as it could have been. We probably immediately want to start working on another one. But I am going to update this thing to bring it up to date and, you know, give it the tech levels that it deserves. Uh, this, in this case, is going to go to the fixers. It's going to go to 2D. It's going to go to systems. It's going to go to network. That should cover everything. We can fix any bugs that are in there as well. And that will at least give us the tech levels that we're looking for. In terms of developing a new digital distribution platform, that is going to take a little while because we need to get this update out first and also deal with any bugs that come in for Vapor 3. And so now with that update out, the tech levels are where they need to be. The features are not. But honestly, that's kind of okay. I'm not super stressed about that. I do think we should start developing a new one, though. I think that's going to be kind of important. Vapor 4. We're just probably going to give it everything that we can possibly give it right now, which is all of this stuff. Cloud Sync is 2005. It's 2002 right now. Remote Streaming is 2010, so that's fine. We are going to give this just absolutely everything. Barney Cole has done Vapor 3, which is fine. It was outstanding. It was visionary, so we'll give Barney this thing as well. And this is Systems, 2D, and Networking. So I am just going to give this to those teams, so 2D network and systems and then same thing with uh with right here so 2d systems and network which puts it on me i did the original vapor it was inspiring it wasn't visionary but i guess that's okay can i give it to i i'm assuming barney is not an option here no he's not okay we'll give it to me that's that's fine let's start developing uh vapor 4 it's going to run in the store it's going to be source controlled on the source and start development absolutely zero rush on that but to be fair my designers can work on it until they're happy about it uh soundscape as well has an update right there so we'll get that pushing out and now what we can do is just give the fixers the job of slowly working on updating bugs for vapor three uh roaster coaster 3d possibly the same thing a lot of tech stuff could be updated on that a lot of bugs to be fixed but i'd like to kind of stay on top of uh vapor three for a second and possibly also on top of soundscape it has a good number of active users so we'll give the the, uh, the fixers that one as well and that should keep them busy that'll give them some bugs to sort out and we are just a couple of months away from releasing Morph 3, which if we go by releases for Morph 2, Morph 2 was $72 million, Morph was 68. This will hopefully be a, a big, big seller. 
Uh, so Morph 3 right here, maximum copies, I'm going to say 125,000 copies in stock. Hopefully they can move out. We do have, uh, actually, we don't have anything sitting around. I think my distribution deals are done. Okay, so we got a couple of good deals done there. These guys want 496,000 copies by May. We can absolutely do that as well. And then I guess we are... I'm, I'm worried about bucket 2000, to be honest. It's due out, what is it, September? So September, October, November, December, January, February. So we've got like seven months to finish bucket 2000. We might have to delay it. It, it might have to get delayed until maybe, maybe December next year, if not further out. If we look at the event calendar, it's due out here. There is probably, I assume, a 2D editor. Is there another 2D editor next year? There actually isn't. So we could push it out in, say, September, delay it by like six months. I just don't know if that's going to do it or if we should, because the whole point of setting these release dates was that we do stick to it. And whatever the deal is when it comes time to push these guys into beta, that's that's just how it is. It is interesting that it is 2D and system that's that's suffering here. Looking at details, I mean, it recommends... That's a lot of programmers. <laughs> recommends 8 and 1. I mean, it's not like... Uh, man, it's... it's I don't know. It's in a rough spot. It's definitely in a rough spot. The last bucket, bucket 4, was great. This one... I don't know. I just... I just don't know. And so now we move into December 2002, which is when Morph 3 is due to release. So let's go ahead and do just that. It has 4,800 followers. I'm hoping it's going to be good. Let's see how we're looking. It's not that buggy. It's five stars, four stars, and five stars. Not bad. Marketing campaign, $100,000. I'm hoping my marketing team has knocked it out of the park on this one. Morph needs to be a priority 10 marketing. This guy can be two. This guy can be one. That's fine. Uh, bucket, by the way, Bucket 2000. 85% on code. Honestly, I think that's about as good as it's going to get. I think uh, maybe maybe 90%. I think we let it go until the end of December. It doesn't have that much marketing behind it. So might not sell. It honestly, it honestly might not sell. It is going to be nearly through. Well, it's going to be over three years late to be called Bucket 2000. Can I, ch I can change its name. What if we changed it to Bucket 2003? What if we just name it after the year that it comes out? That might be the that might be the way to do it. That might be the way to do it. Or we rename it completely to like paint bucket or something like that. You know? I mean it's 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 called bucket because I didn't want to go with paint. So calling it paint bucket seems like cheating. I I don't know. What about what about like bucket red edition? Or something like that. Or bucket red. And then the next one's like bucket blue and bucket green. Like we just go with a color instead of like a number. That would be really confusing, right? As a consumer, that would be a nightmare. Well, actually, no, Pokemon gets away with that all the time. So actually, yeah, we're going to go with like, we're going to go with Bucket Rad. And then the next one will be Bucket Blue and then, you know, Bucket Green, Bucket Yellow, Bucket Purple. We'll, we'll just do it. We'll just do it that way. We're going to go really confusing with that franchise for some reason. That's, uh, <laughs> that's, that's how it's going to be. Let's see. Morph 3. Prominent marketing. Visionary. Outstanding. That has got to sell. Uh, it does need to update, though. System needs to come up a little bit. 3D needs to come up a little bit. Let's get systems, fixers, and 3D working on that. And uh, bugs as well. Anything in there. Porting it, I think, is going to be quite important. There's nothing to port it to. That's good. So it has the maximum number of potential consumers. We just need this update to be out as quickly as possible, which is not going to be all that quick. But I'm hoping that Morph 3 actually sells because we really got to pay off this building. And by that, I mean start making money because we've yet to make money whilst in this building. So we'll see how this ends up going. Uh, minus $100,000 right now is to be expected. I'm hoping that turns into plus like a billion. It's going to be plus 2.8 million. Oh, all right. Five companies have requested access to my digital distribution platform. Uh, not bad. That's actually not bad. 22.3% of the market. I'll take it. How many companies are now on my platform? 21. Okay. Okay. Well, that's nice. That's that's nice that it, uh, it sold. It immediately made a profit. There's nothing to port it to. 
So as soon as this update goes out, hopefully more people are going to be like, man, they really know how to make a 3D editor. Let's let's go and buy it. I don't do anything with 3D editors, but I'm going to buy it anyway. That's that's what we're hoping for, right? That's what we're looking for. Also, surprisingly, oh no, there the bugs are. <laughs> I was, was wondering where they were going to start showing up. Uh, as for Bucket Red, 90% on the code is looking like where it's going to be. I think I might have been right on my assumption on that one. We might get it to 91, maybe 92. But as soon as my employees start heading home, which they are now doing, we're going to go ahead 5 p.m. We are going to push this thing into beta. So that is as good as it's going to be. It could, we could have given it longer, but we kind of need to start dealing with the, uh, with the bugs. We need to make sure it is acceptable uh it's not going to be fantastic but acceptable will do let's go ahead and host lion slim 3 on the host server that'll give me a little bit more money and bucket red we're going to go for a maximum of i guess uh 100 copies of you and that should be pretty good for us so let's see how morph 3 does 2.7 million when all is said and done what is that going to turn into once we tick over into January of the new year. I'm hoping for 3 million. I'm hoping for it. I didn't get it. I got 2.3 million. I'll take it. It's good enough. We also have the fire inspector coming in, so we should be about to find out just how badly we're doing in terms of uh, fire safety. But again, that's that's kind of okay. That's that's the, the whole point is to see how badly we're doing. A room is dirty and needs cleaning. Oh my God. That's filthy. Oh, there we go. All right, well, the cleaners have come by and sorted that out. That's nice. That's that's what, that's what we were looking for. All right, so we still have the 15 escape violations, 21 fire alarm violations, 23 sprinkler viol- What? How have I got more violations than I had last year? Okay, so now I've got and placed a bunch of sprinklers in those rooms. We're going to be waiting until next year to see just how badly things are in terms of fire safety. But the good news is we are actually making money now. Morph 3 is is doing quite well for what they want the they're offering me five million dollars for the morph IP. I'm actually kind of insulted. I'm not gonna lie. I'm gonna turn off the IP offers because I'm not really interested in selling anything that I have. I'm I'm just I'm frankly insulted that they would offer me so little money for a franchise that's making millions upon millions of dollars. A franchise that I've just updated, by the way, that should now make even more money. Five million dollars? I just turned over near five million dollars in a single month, and they're offering me five million for the entire intellectual property. I'm, in, I'm, I'm insulted. I'm actually insulted. How dare they? How much for that company? Who were, who were they? How much are they worth? They're only worth three hundred and sixty-three million dollars. I'll get there eventually. I'm right here, middle of the road. I could be worth considerably more. I'm not, but they're 98.8% listed. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. They're owned by Power Interactive. What? Who is Power Interactive? It's a company that doesn't seem to exist. Wait, what? Hold on a minute. Name sort here. I'm looking for... Yeah, they don't exist. I am suddenly very confused. Is is it possible, I guess, for like third party companies to own? That's weird. That is really weird. How how much of this company could I own with my current money? Seventy six thousand, about this much. I could own twenty percent of that company with all the money that I have in the bank right now. So, needless to say, uh, not a whole lot of the company really. I mean, it's a fifth of the company, but it could be more. And I'd like more than that, so I'm not going to buy anything right now. Burglars went home empty-handed. That's good. 2.5 million and more three is not bad. And all in all, I like to think we're doing pretty well. I'm just curious to see how Bucket Red's going to turn out. And so just like that, it is March 2003. Let's go ahead and get the music to kick in because that's the thing we need to do. Hold on a minute. Repair all rooms and restore all furniture. Apparently, burglars did get away with something at some point, but that's fine. Uh, Bucket Red, March 2003. Let's just release this thing and see how it goes. It's hopefully going to be five stars. It is. It's three stars and it's four stars. Ugh. Could be worse. $100,000 for the marketing team to take a look at that one. We'll move right at the top. Priority 10. Uh, roaster coaster. 
We're going to keep it there. Honestly, we might need more marketers or we split the 42 marketers we have into two separate teams because that might not be a bad idea either. Uh, Bucket Red in terms of marketing and its quality is great. Marketing is sparse. Needs to make about a million, 1.2 million specifically to make a profit. So we'll see how that goes. I'm hoping it makes money. I'm not expecting it to make much. And honestly, that's that's kind of okay. It's not the end of the world. If it doesn't, we are still making money from Morph 3. So that's what we've got going on at the minute. Now, let's take a look. Bucket Red, $629,000. Actually, honestly, kind of respectable. I've got to be honest. I'm I'm actually kind of kind of impressed by that. I did also push an update out for Sniffer just now. So in the past month, I did $31,000. Not really much, to be quite honest. It's uh, it's not much. Definitely not much. Let's update Bucket Red though. Let's get its systems up to date. Let's get its 2D up to date. Let's give it to all the respective teams to do that. And we will uh, fix any bugs and stuff like that as well, making it a bit of a priority. In terms of porting it, let's get it onto this operating system right here so that uh, all of the latest operating systems are able to experience Bucket Red. And with that update out, we are looking at $1.5 million in the month of April for Bucket Red, $5.8 million for Morph 3, almost $600,000 for Soundscape, and $1.7 million for Roaster Coaster 3D Online, which is for some reason having a bit of a resurgence in sales. If we look at its details, it is actually making more money now than it has ever made before, which is kind of remarkable to think about. So I think Roaster Coaster 3D Online, let's get an update out for that. Let's bring everything up to date on this thing. It is going to be kind of silly, the number of different uh, tools that we're going to have to lean into here. But honestly, I'm kind of I'm, I'm kind of okay with that. Uh, so this is looking at it. It's going to be the fixers. It's going to be 2D. It's going to be systems. It's going to be 3D. It's going to be networking and it's going to be audio. It's going to be everybody working on this, but that's fine. 2D editor is uh, Bucket Red. The 3D editor is Morph 3. And the audio tool is not going to be Soundscape, annoyingly. Okay, let's push out the update we have for Soundscape right now, because what that says to me is that Soundscape itself does need its audio brought up to date. So systems as well. We'll throw everybody at that. We'll see if we can push this update out quickly so that an update for Roaster Coaster 3D Online Wait, why do we have this update going through? Why do I have employees here right now? Who are you? Why are you here? I'm really confused about, wh about why you're here. Okay, so now with that done, the Soundscape update done, we can use all of our own stuff to update Roaster Coaster 3D Online. And interestingly, Soundscape right now is the only uh, audio tool with the tech level of 2001. So we are sort of potentially looking at more money coming in from Soundscape. Let's go ahead and get this update going though. And honestly, it might also be an idea to look at making a Roaster Coaster 4, or if we wanted to follow the trends of certain Roaster or Roller Coaster franchises, uh, Roaster Coaster World would be an option as well. Don't know if I love the idea of doing that, but we certainly could. Now Soundscape actually didn't make all that much more money. Uh, Bucket Red, million. Morph 3, 3 million. Roaster Coaster, almost a million. So we're doing all right, honestly. I really can't complain. I'm really, really pleased with where we're sitting right now. And now what's also really exciting is we've passed $100 million again. So we are comfortably making money. The only issue at the minute with this company, in my opinion, is that we are now making nothing. We're doing Vapor 4 at the moment, but other than that, we're making nothing. We're doing a lot of porting and a lot of supporting, but we might want to look into some other things. Uh, let's cancel support for Morph 2. We're not really looking at that anymore. These are the most recent releases that we've put out. Roaster Coaster 3D Online actually does have its update finished, so I'm not going to worry too much about the bugs there. Bucket Red, I do want to get those bugs fixed, and I guess we should probably... Let me just make sure that my distribution deals are doing okay. They seem to be. Uh, we should probably start looking at other things. So another Roaster Coaster, Roaster Coaster World, Soundscape 2, Morph 4, and Bucket Blue, probably. 
I'm kind of feeling like that's where we're at. So we we have some designing to do and possibly some automation. Might not be a bad idea to look into some automation for these things as well, because we are at that stage. Most of my uh, teams, most of my team leaders are capable of automation, so might not be a bad idea to do that. <laughs>